I need you guys to conceptually, conceptually understand or let's see what we're looking at. Now, again, first thing I'm just going to have you guys practice with, okay? Just to kind of verify um, for right now. I want you to first, uh, Daniel, you actually don't need that. You're, we're not using our phones today. No. Um, so the first thing, let's just go ahead and apply the rational zero test just to go ahead and factor um, or to practice with this, okay? So to apply the rational zero test, again, it's going to be plus or minus the factors of 30. So let's just write out all the factors of 30. 30 plus or minus 30, 15, 10, 6, 5, and 1, and 3. Okay, over plus or minus 4, 2, or 1. Now that's going to be a big rational zero, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to list them all. But um, basically, it would be 30 over 4, 30 over 2, 30 over 1, plus or minus 15 over 4, 15 over 2, 15 over 1, plus or minus 10 over 4, 10 over 2, 10 over 1, plus or minus 6 over 4, 6 over 2, 6 over 1. That's not what the question is, but I just want, I just want to write that out because we're going to find all the zeros. We want to make sure it's a rational zero. Okay? You don't need to write all these out. I just want you guys to know what the rational zero is. That's just what the rational zeros are. Now, they're telling us 2 is a 0. Yes? 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you. Now, they say 2 is a 0. Is 2 one of our rational zeros? Well, yes. Plus, or plus 2 over 1, right? So 2 is in our rational zeros. 2 over 1. 2 over 1. That's a rational 0. Um, so therefore, 2 is in our rational 0 list test. Now, we want to find the rest of the rational zeros. So, or we want to find the rest of the zeros. We don't know if they're rational or not. So we need to find the other factors. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to this. If I, take a, if I divide something into there, what do I, I get out? What a, another what? what we, it's another factor, though. But once you, have two, once you have factors, you can find zeros, right? So this is how division is going to come into play. If we know a 0 or if we know a factor, if you divide it into that polynomial, you're going to get the, res the quotient is also a factor or a polynomial. Would you guys agree? x minus 1 divides into this x minus 2 times. x minus 2 is a factor. Or put it this way, 6 over 2 equals 3. 2 is a factor of 6, right? The quotient of 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 is also a factor, correct? So when you take a number and divide it into there and you get an answer, that's also a factor. So we need to find more factors to find the rest of our zeros. So if we're given one zero, what could we do? We could use long division or synthetic division, correct? But since we have a zero, I think it'd be easiest to do long division. So I'm sorry, synthetic division. So what I'll do is I'll set up synthetic division. Make sure it's in ascending power order, which it is, 4, 9, negative 49, and 30. Again, we're using the 0, right? Use synthetic division, use the 0. So again, synthetic division, which we did last night. No, you just, uh, for where? Uh, I didn't. Yeah, good catch. I didn't catch that. It still worked out. That's kind of weird. Um, so yes, thank you. Nine. I looked for it too, but I guess I missed it. So you bring down the first term, which is four. Four times two is eight. Bring down the zero to eight, which is eight. Positive 54. All right, what the heck did I do wrong here? Oh, my bad. I wrote that wrong. I was like, I didn't. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry. I was like, they got the right answer the first time. No, there's, 
I'm sorry, that was X to the third. I wrote it down. I wrote the problem down wrong. You bring down the four. It was to the fourth, I got it to the zero. Sorry. So again, remember this is your remainder, constant, linear, and quadratic. So we have 4x squared plus 17x minus 15. Now, again, there's a couple things that's really important. This is the quotient, right? But this quotient is also a factor, right? Because again, I can't stress this enough. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. We can rewrite that as a product. 2 times 3 equals 6. Whatever you're dividing into, is a, evenly divides, it's a factor. Whatever the quotient is, is a factor. You can multiply your factors, right? Well, so what we have is 2, a zero, does 2 evenly divide into this? Does 2 evenly divide into this polynomial as a 0? So that means if 2 is a 0, what's the factor? x minus 2. And then my quotient is also a factor. x, I'm sorry, 4x squared plus 17x minus 15. This times this gives you that. That's what we worked on over here. This times this gives you that, right? But in reality, guys, what are they asking us to do? They're saying find all the remaining zeros. So here are your two factors. We need to find all of them. Now, and again, using the um, fundamental theorem of algebra, how many zeros do we have? Three. Well, we know already what one zero is. We need to find the rest of the zeros. So we need to set this factor equal to zero and solve. So we have four x squared plus 17 x minus 15 equals zero. Do you guys remember at the beginning of the year, our focus lessons? What was our focus lesson? Does anybody remember what our focus lesson was tailored on? Solving quadratics. So guess what you're expected to do here? Solve quadratics. What are your ways to solve quadratics? Factor, right? You can factor when A is not equal to 1, when A is equal to 1. You can go ahead and complete the square, or you can use the quadratic formula. Those are all possibilities for you to be able to do to solve this. In this example, though, this, uh, this is factorable. Um, basically, we can break this up into 4x times x. And we want to see what factors of 3. And if I see, I do, let's see, we'll make that a 5. So we'll do positive 5 minus 3. That is your factor form. I know some of you might be having a little trouble with that, so you might have to use AC method. But you guys could do it, and then you can set those equal to each other, or set those equal to 0. Now let's go back to our rational 0 test. Samantha, you can put your, that down. You don't need that, that out right now. Now let's go back to our rational 0 test and make sure this works. We already know 2 is a 0 in your rational 0. Is 3 over 4 a rational 0? 3 over 4, right? So that works. What about negative 5? Could you have negative 5? Yes. yes, you could have negative 5 over 1. OK? And again, how many zeros are we supposed to have? 3. How many zeros did we find? 3. 